Welcome to the Voice of Africa TV. Today we have a very, very special guest with us who goes by the name of Miss Edia Eisen. Hello, Edia. Yes. Today. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, can you can tell us about your childhood growing up. Um, <laughs> okay, so I am the last child of 12 kids. Sure. Um, <laughs> I grew up in Lagos, Nigeria until I was about 15 years old. Mm-hmm. And then I moved to um, the United States. I first was living in Pennsylvania, where I started studying journalism. And then I transferred to American University in DC oh. and from there, NYU. But anyway, growing up, um, I grew up in a full house, a lot of siblings, you know, we'd fight over food and toys and, you know, cool stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm very family oriented, very close to my siblings. Um, my dad passed two years ago. Um, and I think that was a major turning point for me in my life. Yeah. It's already here that I'll definitely send my comments as well. Um, Thank you. Yeah, were there any like early experiences, you know, maybe growing up that kind of shaped you into the person that you are today? Absolutely. I think everything that I am today is as a consequence of the kind of people that I grew up around. So my my dad was extremely hardworking, no matter how much he had or how little he had, he just kept grinding, I guess. Um he was also very selfless, so he would do stuff for a lot of people. Like he had a lot of people that he had to take care of. Um, and my mom was, of course, very. She was. My mom's from Cameroon. My dad's from Nigeria. Wow. My mom was very. My mom is very religious, and um, she would pray for us all the time and emphasize that you know anything you wanted, you could pray for. So um, I think those two things, like the grind <laughs> and um just basically having faith are the two things that have sort of shaped the kind of person i am uh, for sure i definitely do agree with that as well you know coming out from a religious background as well you know so you mentioned that you traveled from you traveled to the united states you know you're in pennsylvania you went to dc to new york what drove you to you know go up above and beyond to you know get in such advanced education you know abroad well Um, I've never really told anybody this before, but um, even though people do say that I'm from a wealthy family, when my dad was growing up, he wasn't from a wealthy home and he was very smart, but he couldn't um, get his, he couldn't go to university at first and he always wanted to study computer engineering. So when we were growing up, he always told us that, look, you know, the opportunities I'm giving you guys. I didn't have some of those opportunities and education is so important because if anything happens, you can always fall back on those degrees. And that's kind of what um, has happened to me all through my career. It's like I modeled what I was still in school. You know, I was acting, but I still plan to go back to school for a PhD. Like I just feel like education is important and it's something that nobody can take away knowledge from you. And it's always something that I found in every single, I guess, industry I found myself in the little things you learn and you're like ah that's why I, I know this thing right. so um yeah I think I think um just knowing that I had parents that may not have necessarily had the same opportunities handed to them growing up um emphasized the importance of education to me oh for sure and it's very interesting that you mentioned you know you're going back to get a PhD because watching one of your you know your recent interviews and you talked about how you you know you always looked up to your dad know because yeah. of the doctor and the, you even had your ig name was dr Eisen for a second i think it changed it yeah. yeah yeah and it was dr idia because my dad was dr icm right so yeah no, that's very interesting so what do you think has been you know one of your greatest strengths and weaknesses you know part of your journey you know going back into nigeria and you know, going into that industry oh okay well strength um for sure the fact that i'm a go-getter right. weakness for sure the fact that i'm a go-getter that is a perfection <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of um just being a go-getter i guess no matter how many times i fall i'm one of those people that just always keeps coming back i'm sort of annoying in that way 
mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's like wait wasn't she crying last week and then <laughs> she's back again <laughs> um, yeah um and I, I i would say i'm a dreamer so i think that's a good strength because i think once you stop seeing you know the things that are possible a limit um in terms of nigeria it's it was really hard moving back because i wanted to do all these great things like tell stories about africa and all that stuff and then a lot of things happen and you're like oh this sets us back <laughs> so many years and whatever so i i think i think um my strength is just being able to thrive despite my environment can you talk about how you've you know transitioned from one industry into another because not a lot of people can do that as effectively as you have been able to Whew, that has been the most interesting thing okay so um with modeling i feel like it was the hardest one but i juggled it at the same time with um journalism because i was studying while modeling mm-hmm. and um i think because i was studying journalism everything I did in terms of television presenting was seamless because I was well-trained and all of that. While with modeling at the time, it, could have, it, was, it was very dicey, you know, like not being able to go to a photo shoot or a job because you had class or because you had school or whatever. Um, and I was also working at the same time um, at a desk job, which was funny. Anyway, <laughs> um, but I would say the hardest thing so far has been transitioning into acting just because I never wanted to be an actress. I always felt like it's one of those things you're either born good at or you're not, you know? Um, And um, when they were like, oh, we'll coach you. I was like, can you coach someone who can act? And they were like, you don't know that you can act. So, um, so far, there's one, if there's one thing I haven't heard about the movie, I haven't heard anybody say she's a bad actress. Everybody loved my performance. um, And I think that, the coaching and all of that was worth it. Um, so I think sometimes people may have skills or talents that they don't even know they have. Sure. Um, and I sure. guess it just takes a little nudge. So I would say something that has helped me transition is not being afraid to try new things. For sure. And that's definitely a lot of insight you give it as well. I feel like a lot of people do have hidden talents that they have within them that they don't really tell yeah. just because of the fact that they may think oh, I'm not good at this, or I can never do that. But, you know, listen yeah. to someone like you talk about it, and you've been successful, like, you know, various energies as well might give them the push, you know, to be able to do yeah. something. Absolutely. What do you think the most fulfilling aspect of your career has been so far? Fulfilling aspect? Oh, yes. I think um, every time I push something, mm-hmm. And somebody comes back and says, oh, thank you so much for posting that thing. Or thank you so much for making that video. Like, it really helped me today. So I think every time I get positive feedback that somebody, even if it's just one person, has been affected in some positive way by something I've done or been part of, I think that's the most rewarding thing um, I can ask for. Because material things, as you will learn from, you know, Nigeria. (laughs) Uh, material things they don't mean as much you know as being able to like help somebody else or lift somebody else up so yeah so is there anything you're currently working on right now or you know you're you're really excited to release um so there are two things um my dad used to what we do in our families we distribute alcohol Mm -hmm. across uh, my country so uh, what I have now is I've created my own drink and it's, and you're, this is the first time I'm telling anybody this and it's set to launch this summer. Um, so that I'm really, really excited about, but I never, ever talk about it. And then something else that everyone knows, I announced uh, an organization three years ago and it's called the International Development Initiative in Africa, uh, the IDEA project. Right. Um, I even did something really cool yesterday Um, I went to a children's hospital and our organization is basically partnering to raise funds um, for drugs and, you know, to also take care of hospital fees for people who can't afford to take care of those fees for their kids. So, um, yeah. So we have that project, a documentary on it coming out very soon. I think that's coming out before the drink. So I'm really excited about those two things. Yeah, it's definitely huge. I was actually doing some research on that as well because I definitely wouldn't want to be involved in that. I think you're looking okay. for 20 donors for like 25K. 
or something like oh, that. Oh, I need to change that. We achieved that like in the first week or so. Oh. Like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First week, that was so casual. <laughs> <laughs> no, immediately, I, I, immediately we, we made the announcement. Like, people were just like, oh, how can I help? So, yeah, so that's, that's done. No, for sure. So, can you um, touch a little bit on, like, exactly what the project, you know, was about? Okay. So, basically, the first thing that I learned from living in the U.S. for over 10 years was, and this is why I was saying, um, the material things like in the sense of whatever job and all of that that you have doesn't really count because people would still ask me questions like oh you know are there roads in your country or um is there freedom of speech or you know like all these really weird questions you have airports and i'm thinking how did i get to the united states yeah, without it? <laughs> yeah so um one of the things that i really wanted to do and part of why i studied journalism was hoping that i could use this platform to spare the African narrative, so to, to change the narrative right. for the more positive, so to just educate people on the amazing things going on in Africa. Because yes, there's a lot of corruption, there's disease, and there's so much happening, but there's also a parallel story that people don't tell. For instance, Africa is home to the highest number of budding entrepreneurs in the world. For instance, you know, we have um, a force of Africans all over the world that are doing amazing things that are changing the globe. Then, you know, we have so many industries that are being developed. People don't hear those stories as fast as they hear about bomb blasts and, you know, a president that refuse, refuses to leave power. So I just think that as much as we do have maybe one or two platforms already doing it, we need more platforms telling those positive stories. Because if we keep talking about terrorism, disaster, poverty, We'll keep getting more of that. People are unconsciously um, designed to continue in what in whatever. How do I explain it? People are unconsciously um, accustomed to not doing anything if they're used to hearing the bad stories over and over. But when you show them this is working or this industry, um, this is what we've done with these investments, etc. Then I think that more people are like, oh, okay. So not all the funds that we send to Africa are being misused and things like that. So um, it's just basically a platform, a documentary series that showcases people, government offices, institutions, international organizations that are doing amazing stuff to move the continent forward. That's great. That's I, great. Don't, I don't know if I explained it properly. No, that was like perfect. And I definitely, you know, <laughs> um, you know, relate with you on that as well. Because I did love, I moved to Pennsylvania as well. I went to school over there in high school for like okay years. and my the high school that i went to i was like the only black kid over there so like i had you know i was able to kind of you know change a few people's perspective about africa but they all kind of yeah same, you know thing is the media's fault so until people like you and i you know go out and you know decide to kind of change the narrative it's never going to be that way unfortunately so that absolutely is, sure um, Absolutely. Can you describe the next five years of your life, and you know, like career-wise mm. and personal as well? Next five years, I'm thinking, obviously, personally, a husband, mm -hmm. three children. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't <know laughs> get, I don't know if I'll have all three in five years. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a family, basically, my own family. Um, definitely, like this uh, drink brand. What I'm trying to do with it is forever. I'm hoping that one day, the way we talk about the Hennessy's and you know all these other maisons of alcohol, hopefully it's something that will outlive me. Um, then I guess the Idea Project will still be running, hopefully, and it will be successful. And maybe more movies. Like if I get the kind of role that I've just been in, something that is really challenging, um, something that shows people wow like she wasn't even an actress and she can do this you know basically something inspiring um yeah more movies no for sure so i know you just touched on you know uh, hopefully a husband just in case it's like a potential husband watching this right now no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> i just i just know that it's time for me i don't think that it's a standard for every woman because not everybody wants that but i just know that for me it's time so, so like, what, what qualities are you looking for in a guy? Uh, just honestly, emotional intelligence. Mm. So not doing something to someone that you wouldn't want them to do to you, you know? 
someone that is thoughtful. That's really it. I don't care about physical things the way people do. Yeah. Um, I think how I feel is what pushes me to do most of the things that I've done in terms of my career and all of that. So if I was doing things based on the physical, I think I'd be a completely different person. Sure. So, yeah. So it doesn't matter if the guy's like four, four, six, like one. There's nobody four, six. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like physical does matter a little bit. Like, it's definitely I don't like know. You don't know? You obviously don't live in Nigeria. You haven't. Yeah, seen I guess. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't really have um, a lot of choice here. <laughs> no, no, no shade. Yeah. <laughs> so I think even uh, yeah, just I don't know. I feel like if you do find someone that is good looking and has a great character, yeah, that's like a like a phoenix mm. or a pony. So that's wonderful. I'll take it. Yeah, of course. No, for sure. <laughs> So how do you wish to see, you know, the future of Africa and, you know, in terms of media? I know there's a lot of, you know, things going on right now with colorism and, you know, dark skin, you know, women not being able to portray, you know, certain roles or get certain roles in you know, the industry. I just want to live in an Africa where women occupy more offices um, politically. I want to live in an Africa where there isn't like the, the rules aren't so rigid when it comes to women. I want to live in an Africa where people can be free, where young people can thrive. Cause I think that's one of the things that I noticed is a really huge problem here is, you know, it's so hard for young people to start businesses, to get loans, to do so many things because I don't want to call it oppression, but, but because there are so many people um, that have messed up, certain um lines of business already it's so hard for systems to be structured in a way that it benefits young people that's what i think um i want to live in an africa where children can go to school you see some of the schools here and you know it's unbelievable like you wouldn't wish that on anyone um an africa where we finally have good governance and i honestly used to think that it was easy, you know, if we prayed and, you know, if some young people were in power, like maybe things will change, but it's really becoming a pandemic in itself to find good leaders or to find good people that don't get corrupt when they get into power. Right. So I just, if I could wish for anything, I think that's what I would wish for more than anything. I'm tired of hearing people saying they're leaving Nigeria. I'm tired of hearing people talk about all the problems, like, I want to hear more about the good stuff that's happening because if we don't tell those stories, then a lot of those people's efforts are in vain. Right. So, yeah. That would be ideal. And hopefully at one point, you know, in the future, we can definitely get to that. Hopefully. What do you think of, you know, the future of, you know, the, you know, the colorism and the, and the media space when it comes to like modeling, you know, actors, you know, in, in the ETC. <laughs> I know there's definitely a lot. Colorism. <laughs> So the, the first thing I will say is that it's a huge issue because, I mean, it's even happening abroad, you know, where because of the color of people's skin, you know, certain rules don't apply to certain people or whatever. And then I think the craziest part of colorism here is beauty standards where not even beauty, even cultural standards where people are like oh you know if she's lighter then you know she's fresher and she's riper i don't know i didn't even know people could be called ripe <laughs> but you know <laughs> she's riper and and things like that and it's and it's scary that people still think that way um but they do mm -hmm. and um i think that there are many young women many actually young and old women here and older women who are you know basically changing that narrative you have a lot of in this new industry i mean in acting you have a lot of really beautiful dark-skinned girls you have beverly naya you have beverly osu you have um you have omomi dada there's so many people uh omoni oboli muabudu beautiful women that have sort of just taken charge of their own lives and not said you know society is dictating this and you know i'm gonna fall in line but i i still think that there's a huge a huge problem 
with the role I was just casted in, the two actresses that that had acted as NECA in 1994 and in 1998 were both lighter skinned women. So I was training so hard for a role physically, emotionally. I was taking acting classes. I was um, being taught how to fight, swim, speak another language, dance. And I, and I saw comments online where people were assuming that another person was given the role because they were like, oh, of course it's this person. She's light skinned. And, you know, to go through what I was going through and seeing those comments, it wasn't very easy. When the announcement was finally made that I had gotten the role, I remember people saying, why would they, well, some people saying, why would they use a darker skinned girl? It doesn't make any sense. Um, some even said I wasn't pretty. Wow. Um, I saw all kinds of comments. And <laughs> I think the light is affecting this interview because I'm, I'm darker than this. Yeah, um, well. <laughs> No, no, no. The hair, the hair is, you know, and it's just for a shoot I just had. But, um, yeah, to see things like that, it's almost like I was born this way and I'm comfortable in my skin and somebody else isn't comfortable with what I look like. That's scary. You know, that's really scary. Um, and Neka, the character I played, is a fictional character. It was that she didn't exist before. It was a story, you know? So to say that this person has to look like this is absolutely, like, absolutely. mind-blowing. So, yeah, so there were hurtful comments, but there was also a movement of people that are exposed, that are intelligent, that, you know, just want to challenge the status quo. And they were like, oh, my God, Neka is a dark-skinned girl. Oh, this is amazing. You know, and, yeah, but then there were the trolls, you know? Yeah, that's crazy. Like, and obviously, there are always going to be trolls, but do you think that mentality would, would ever go away, especially like in the African community? I don't. I don't think so. Honestly, I don't think so. And a lot of people always ask, "Oh, why are you single?" or whatever, whatever. Two days ago, um, somebody that I was talking to, who I thought was a like a you know a good, uh, how do you say a good suitor? Nice guy. He was like. <laughs> he he asked me he was like i hope i hope what did he say he said i hope you're i hope you're you're yellow and fresh i don't know he said something really weird about skin and i just i haven't picked up his call since so i i i just yeah i find it i think it's a great thing to be beautiful mm -hmm. but i i don't be fooled by what i look like i'm an intelligent person that just happened to be pretty. I'm not a pretty girl that happened to be intelligent. Right. So, yeah. So, I don't think it's smart to be all about looks. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with you on that aspect as well. And, like, more times, looks tend to deceive, you know, as well, too. So, I mean, hopefully one, obviously it's never going to change, but hopefully, you know, more Africans, or more African guys, I would say, um, <laughs> get educated on, you know, the fact that you know lighter skin does not necessarily equal to being you know more pretty or more exactly different. look at lupita look at naomi campbell who right. is like in her <laughs> in her 50s i mean there's so many look at iman there's so many people that are proven that and i don't even think that i don't even think that dark skin is necessarily prettier or lighter skin is prettier i just think skin is skin you right. know what i mean yeah so I think that there should be more when you look at a person. That's just my opinion. No, I definitely do agree with you. And uh, the last question I have for you is how can the Voice of Africa support your causes and the projects that you have in the future? Well, let me tell your story. Let me, let me, um, let me use your platform as an example of, you know, an amazing thing that you guys are doing by letting Africans tell their story. So, yeah, thank you, you know, very much for coming on our platform. I really appreciate that. All right. Thank you.